The three secret tools for working on computers are A, a good hammer. The two secret tools for working on your computer are A, a pair of aviation snips. Fine. So I guess the wine opener is completely out too? Fine, fine. The CompTIA A Plus has a number of objectives that cover a group of issues that I call equipment safety. Now, when it comes to equipment safety, number one, what we're talking about here is how do we protect the equipment from, well, us more than anything else. And to start that, I want to show you my mess here. This is a classic, what I call, cable kludge. And I'll bet most of you guys have something very similar to this mess behind your desktop system at your house or at your office. It's pretty common stuff. It's also pretty dangerous. Big messes of cables are, number one, it makes things difficult to track. If you you know, throw a cable modem in here and a, and a router and a couple of other things, and after a while, if you have a problem, it becomes very difficult to figure out where anything is. Uh, secondly, you can create electrical hazards. Um, you can also uh, create uh, electromagnetic interference problems. Running these poor little ethernet cables right next to a AC adapter can cause a lot of problems. So what I'm telling you is, don't cable kludge. Take advantage of cable management tools. Anything from wire wraps to good old Velcro, there's a million different products out there that allow you to make things prettier. So don't do this at home, okay? Another really important tool to have around is a fire extinguisher. I've been in the business for quite a while, and I hate to tell you this, but I've used these quite a few times, and they are important. Fire extinguishers come in three different types. There's type A, which is for wood fires, type B, which is for grease fires, and type C, which is for electrical fires. The fire extinguisher I like to keep around is this guy right here. This is a BC fire extinguisher. So it's designed really for a home more than anything else. So if you have a grease fire in your kitchen, or if you have some electronics going off, this is exactly the type of tool you need. Keep in mind, though, that when you let off a fire extinguisher, especially in your house, uh, you're going to want to be leaving very, very quickly because they, they will suck all the oxygen out of the room. So before you hit the go button on this thing, make sure you know which way the door is because it's, uh, let's just say I've made some pretty impressive messes over the years setting these off indoors. When it comes to tools, there's a lot of tools that technicians need. Now, what I want to cover right now is just the most basic tool set that you really want to have. Now, when it comes to tools, the best tool you can have is a good old number two Phillips screwdriver. This is going to help you pretty much any case, uh, taking out power supplies, pulling off motherboards. This one tool is pretty much all you're going to need for 95% of the issues that you're going to be running into with desktop systems. But the thing is, is that desktop systems are only a small part of what we do today. And as a result of that, we need tool sets that allow us to do things like pop open an iPhone, or open up a tablet and all kinds of other stuff like that. And then as a result, a number two Phillips screwdriver isn't enough. Now, I could go through a long litany in detail of all the different tools you need, or I can do something better for you. I found a company called iFixit.com that sells an amazing little toolkit, and I've got one right here. This toolkit comes with just about anything you could possibly imagine. In particular, in this main case here, it has bits for all kinds of specialty little sockets that you're not going to be able to find anyplace else. Uh, and it, it does an absolutely fabulous job for opening up any kind of case that you could possibly ever imagine. But more than that, it comes with all these little guys. Do you need a little piece like this? Well, if you want to open up a tablet PC, this is the absolute perfect tool for it. It's, it's a pride to pop it open. And uh, for, gosh, all kinds of other stuff. For example, uh, monitors, if you want to open up a monitor, these tools really come into play. So I absolutely love this guy, and this one little toolkit has replaced a big mess that I used to have laying around, and I can't recommend it highly enough as a single place to get just about everything you need. The last thing I want to talk about are voltmeters, or more technically, multimeters. What I have here is a couple of different multimeters. This is a digital multimeter. Digital multimeters are great because, well, for one thing, 
they're a little bit more forgiving in terms of how you use them. Uh, now this guy is set uh, to voltage, but because you can also do things like resistance and measure amperage, this is actually more than a voltmeter, it's a multimeter. And the A plus wants you to know that this is an important tool for us. One of the most important places you can use a multimeter is right here. What I've gotten is, is an electrical outlet. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you how to test for voltage. Now I'm using United States voltage, which is 115 volts AC. This works all over the world the same way. We all have three plugs. So if you take a close look here, you'll see we've got a smaller plug. That smaller plug is what we call our hot. We have a larger plug, which is what we call our neutral. And then we have this third plug, which we call a ground. Now, for the A+, you need to be able to know how to use a multimeter to test this stuff. So, let's go ahead and get started. There's actually three tests that are done simultaneously. First of all, we plug in our red lead. Oh, make sure you're set to voltage on your multimeter. So we plug our red lead into the hot side and our black lead into the neutral side. Now these are blades in there and these are little probes, so sometimes you gotta give a little pry before the voltmeter gives you a good voltage. So that's our first test right there, and that should be reading around 115 to 120 volts here in the United States. Your next test is keep your lead in the hot, but now put it into the ground. You wanna test this, and this should also read 115 to 120 volts in the United States. Interestingly enough, there's one more test I wanna do, and that is you plug your red lead into the neutral and your black lead into the ground. If you're doing this right, you should only be getting, uh, well, you should be getting zero volts, but you'd be surprised how often people miswire things, and for example, that they switch the hot and the neutrals and things like that, and it can cause a real problem. Anytime somebody puts new outlets into my house, the first thing I'm gonna do is personally run to each one of these outlets and test them. Electricians are busy people, and they can mess things up, I would say, one out of 100 outlets are messed up. And as a result of that, you can save a lot of electricity just by taking a little time and testing that type of stuff. The last thing you need to be aware of when it comes to equipment safety is local compliance. There's all kinds of rules. For example, here in the United States, we have uh, local city and even state laws that determine things like in an office environment, uh, what type of, we're required to have certain types of fire extinguishers around. Uh, it, we also have in the United States the, our safety group called OSHA, and they have very strict rules on how cable management's handled. You need to be able to take the time to look in, at your local, state, and national regulations to make sure you're keeping your equipment safe. Trust me, it's worth it in the long run.